Hello everyone and welcome, welcome. <laughs> Very glad that you're here with me today. Uh, let me introduce myself if you haven't been in one of my previous classes or one of our on-ground classes. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia, the Harlem Library and also the Uchi Creek, now the Grovetown Library because we have a new library in Grovetown, yay. And of course, we've been staying home and staying safe and everything. So we're doing all our classes online and everything. So make sure to share our links with friends or family members and you know let them know that we're still doing learning and stuff like that at the library, of course. In our class today, of course, we're doing some Halloween stuff this month. And Saturday is Halloween, ooh, spooky time of year. And I actually have a um, Halloween shirt on today. That's right. <laughs> Participation for a new season of a certain show. And we also have uh, our Scratch Basics, Let's Make a Spooky Game. So uh, that's one of the things we're doing today. So very glad that you're here with me today. So welcome to class. And as always, I always start off with, please feel free to post any kind of questions you have into the chat. Happy to help in any way that I can. How can I help? Have you tried any of these projects I'm going to talk about and had a problem with them in the past? Well, maybe I can help. Maybe we can work together and uh, get it working and stuff. Okay. So this month we've been doing a whole bunch of different fun classes. And next month our schedule will be coming out soon uh, for November. And I do have planned. We'll do kind of a Thanksgiving turkey uh, drawing and animation. Uh, with scratch kind of class uh, so we've done a lot of Halloween themed stuff a lot of fun stuff spooky dance party card stuff uh, uh, Google in the beginning and uh, Python class spot the difference as well and then we also did our first unity class where we made an amazing robot game we didn't actually finish that due to time so I think next month we'll kind of maybe finish that or we'll actually do that in a part one and part two uh, so that we can even get all that in but of course everything's listed and all these videos are, are excuse me listed all these videos are available here on our YouTube channel and you can see all the previous videos and one that we did uh, yesterday that was a lot of fun was our setting up our uh, the sound trap okay so basically what we did is we turned our usual uh, Raspberry Pi Python um, coding sound machine which has usually been a whoopee cushion now it's a so we have a random sound maker there you go it's three sounds and it'll play them randomly and it is something that you can set up um, and the neat part about this is doing it with our Raspberry Pi you can make it any kind of sounds or even music if you wanted to and basically just set it up underneath a um, 
a mat or doormat and they step on it it makes it kind of a fun sound now this is one of those things where I'm not trying to scare anybody so even if you did put something that says step on me on top of this that could be a neat thing to do too so that was one of our projects yesterday Ooh, the spiders are coming <laughs> So it was a big success and it was a lot of fun and I even kind of liked it a little bit better than doing the whoopee cushion one Anything that you can make into a button. I talk about that uh, it Closes something that they they push or press on and as long as it closes the circuit It'll actually make the the sound or music and stuff and that video is still available and all the links to that and just a little side note here our library has switched over from RB Digital, so if you're looking for ebooks or free audiobooks, you need to download the Libby app. That happened on October 1st. So maybe if you're looking for some spooky stories or something, audiobooks to listen to, maybe turn out the lights a little bit, maybe even make a uh, sofa tent or something out of some sheets uh, for little bits. And uh, I guess big bits too, that sounds like a fun thing to do. And maybe listen to a spooky story so download the Libby app now you're not gonna it says what library you with it's not the Evans library it's not the Harlem library not Grovetown either say that you're with the our big library system the greater Clarks Hill regional library system it'll pull right up and just choose Georgia download destination and then enter your library card okay then browse the books and download them. Remember, there's no late fees on any audiobooks or ebooks. They just expire for the time. On a side note, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Uh, one of the things is no study rooms and, of course, no on-ground uh, classes and stuff. That's why we're doing our stuff virtually. Curbside hold pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call in the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m., to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now we're having a subscribe drive. If we can get 100 subscribers, we can get our own customized YouTube address. So help us out with that and hit subscribe. Also, um, or you can search YouTube for GCHRL videos and it'll pull right up. So let's go ahead and start with our class here. So this is a little bit of a change now. One of the things we do is that we're um, focusing on some spooky stuff now, of course. We're going to do our ghost game, which actually is part of our um, you, um, Scratch Let's Make a Game class. So I'm actually going to post that handout into our chat there so you can download it. We'll go over a little bit of stuff. I'll show you a quick video about Scratch. All right, so Scratch, let's make a game. Let me make sure that that is, yeah, that would be the newest one. All right, so, so we're gonna do our, a little bit of overview of Scratch, and then of course we'll do our ghost game. And here's our handout. So kind of the idea is if you're coming to one of my classes at the library, one of the things is I've had the handout printed out. Everybody would have their own computer. Of course, I'd be doing um, the on the main uh, projector screen as well so you could follow along, but also so that, that you know it's something that you could take with you as well. So that's kind of the idea of the handout. So you may actually want to have me if you're following along and maybe a separate little device, and then you can actually follow along, hear me there, Look at the handout, and of course, I'm going to flip back and forth with the handout as well. So, um, hold on. There it is. And it's loading. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we're going to finish this, and if we have time, we'll actually play around with another game as well. All right, so we're going to make a spooky game. Ooh, not scary, but spooky fun. <laughs> so I'm going to disappear. 
And you should still hear my voice and the sound effects. <laughs> to keep it going and spooky and everything. And those sound effects I'm playing are actually uh, non-copywritten and, and the previous class I actually have them in the chat and you can download them too. All right, so let's talk about what we're gonna cover. We're gonna talk about uh, what is Scratch, okay? And if you know this, it's okay. Maybe a little bit of a refresher. Uh, we'll talk about what is Scratch. We'll talk about how to sign up for Scratch and how to save your projects. We'll start Scratch. We'll do a quick overview of our program and then we'll delve into doing our Ghostbusters game. So this month we have done several things with Scratch. We did a, uh, a prank uh, game where it was uh, the witch and then you click on something and then the, it changes to a ghoul after a certain amount of time. We did that with Python and we did that with our um, Scratch as well and those videos are still up and available too. And then our other Halloween one we did was a dance party which is kind of more of a learning the animation getting the characters to be animated and I think next month we might do a turkey one where we actually focus more on drawing. I think that would be kind of fun. Alright and get our turkey to go gobble 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 and stuff like that. Alright and then we're going to talk about our Ghostbusters game and if we have time we might make some of our other projects a little bit more spooky. Okay so let's go ahead here or scratch the cat. So what is Scratch and what can I do with it? Scratch is a programming language, an online community where you can create your own interactive stories, games, and animations and share your creations with others around the world. In the process of designing and programming Scratch projects, you learn to think creatively, reason systematically, and work collaboratively because you can uh, then post your creations and you can actually edit them too as well. And then the class will go and we'll play around with some of our um, the other things that have been posted. I've actually played around with a few of them just by doing search in the uh, the basically the projects of, of uh, Scratch projects and it's pulling up a whole bunch of very creative um, games on there. So not only will we be making a game, we'll also show you where you can go and play some free games too. So how much does Scratch cost? Okay. Do I need a license? No, you don't. It's absolutely completely free. You don't need a license. Um, Scratch is always and available for free. One thing that's really neat because it is a it is categorized under open source uh, programming language. You could actually sell your projects if you wanted to. So if you work really hard on a project, you might actually be able to sell it. Isn't that interesting? Uh, to learn more about Scratch, check out the About page on scratch.mit.edu page. And now I'm going to show a quick little video, kind of an overview of Scratch. Get that loaded up. Give me one second. Got to mute my mic. Okay, as you can see, there's a lot of fun things that you can do with Scratch. And let's go ahead and let's start talking about Scratch a little bit. So the big thing is, we want to, we want to go to Scratch, 
uh, .mit.edu. And the big thing about it is uh, you don't everything we do today you actually will not have to you know you um, give them your email address if you don't want to you don't have to log in the only real reason to log in setting signing up with the username and password is basically so that you can then save your project so you'll see me save my project it'll automatically be uploaded and then you can actually um, you know create what you want you can share what you want and the thing about that is it makes it pretty easy to come back to your projects later so if you don't want to do that that's perfectly fine it does require an email email address they'll never send you anything or sell anything like that it's just for you to be able to have a login so let's go ahead and let's go to scratch.mit.edu I think that's the same video. Yeah, sure is. Okay. That's the same video I just showed you. Good, they've actually started to include it on their page. That's really good. So basically what it is, you can click Join Scratch. Like I said, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it will allow you to save your project, so it makes it a little bit easier to come back later, and it also will allow you to share, excuse me, it will also allow you to share your projects as well. But let's go ahead and let's click Create. Now my account, I think it automatically signs in. But anyway, so we'll come back here later to the Explore section. This kind of gives you a little bit of synopsis of some of the games that people are making, interactive stories, and even animated movies. It's, it's, more, it's more like because they have worked so hard on them. So I'm gonna do my sign in. And I'm gonna click Create. And it's gonna load the editor. We have Scratch the Cat of the Cat already on there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's keep talking about Scratch. And remember, this is a Halloween class. We have had a spooky sound. And <laughs> hopefully, y'all like that. I know it's kind of it's just sitting here anyway. The project's still on from yesterday, so. All right, let's do a little bit of a, pro, a program overview here. We're going to talk about uh, number one, number two area. So number one is our stage, okay? This is where we actually see our characters, where we move our little sprites around, okay? Um, give your project a name is a big one, which we'll talk about that in a second. Number two here talks about the backdrop or the background. A lot of the times, and if we do get to the other project, you'll actually see that the sprites interact with the background. You can actually make it so uh, you draw a red line on the background. And you say, well, the red line, if the ball reaches the red line, then the game's over. You know, and then it's like you have your own soccer game almost going on. All right, so let's talk about there's our backdrop will be there, and we can actually add animation and we can add interactivity with the background as well okay so do realize that all right what about number three what is number three number three is our sprites okay so basically where the cat is this will show all our sprites and each sprite has its own coding so if you're going to do some kind of interactive with that sprite then you're usually clicking on that sprite and then your or, you know graphic or whatever you want to call it and then doing the coding in our, our section here, which we'll talk about in a second. To load more sprites, you click the cat, and we'll, I'll show that in a minute. You click it again, and it'll show the pre-made ones that come with um, uh, Scratch. So we'll sh I'll show you all that in a second. Number four is our work area. That's our biggest section right here. You can zoom in and zoom out as well. This is where our code goes for our different sprites. Okay. So basically you click a sprite or the background, you add your code to the work area, okay? And that's where we do all our kind of stuff, adding our sounds, that's where our code is. And our blocks are on the left side, and also our control button is on the top right, 
So do we click our green flag to start our game? We click the stop game, stop button to stop the game. On the left side here are our code blocks. The great part about this is they're in separate categories, as you can see here, but also you can scroll down all the way up and down and all, you'll run into all the blocks. So uh, they are color coordinated, but if you do run into an issue where you're going, oh man, I, I know it's on here somewhere, uh, but 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 where is it? Well, just scroll up and down here. It, you will find it eventually. I work with the reason I mentioned that is I work with some other programs that are similar to this, and then it's all very separate, and you have to click and scroll down each category individually, and it just takes up more time. So it's very easy and nice to just be able to scroll down. All right, using our blocks. Okay, big thing with our blocks are. They're kind of like Legos, so we are turning code into Legos. And what I mean by that is, basically, if the code doesn't go together, that means the Legos don't pieces don't go together. So there are all kinds of different shapes, but if they don't they don't fit together, that means that the code will not work together. Okay. It makes this a great beginner uh, for any kind of person that's wanting to learn the language, kind of any age. The big thing is it starts to make us think about, well, if we have an action, we need to have a, a undo action, or if this is working, we need to do it in a certain order because of the way that the, the program uh, runs. So we have motion, we have looks, we have sound. Um, we also have events, control, okay? Sensing, one of our big blocks is that we have when the, when the flag is clicked, meaning the game starts, um, we can have certain things happen, okay, and that's under events. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started with our Ghostbusters uh, game. Let's talk about what we're going to learn. We're going to learn how to and understand the need for pauses between actions with loops. Use code to generate random numbers in Scratch. Add a variable to store a game score in Scratch, and we're going to have a countdown clock as well. So we're going to learn a lot of things here. The really great thing about this is, and it allows you to be creative, is um, a, a, you always want to kind of follow the tutorial exactly for the first time, kind of like making, you know, baking a cake, cooking something in general, follow the tutorial the first time, and then if you want to go back, make changes to it, once you understand the coding, um, then you can feel free, feel free to make changes to it, and maybe even start a new project where you're changing things. So anything that we do here, you could change the graphics if you want to, of course, change the background, the sounds and everything, and you've already got the score set up and our timer set up as well, okay? Now this project is actually from uh, raspberrypi.org. I'll show that real quick. So if you go there, this actually has a nice little, uh, the game's kind of loaded here. It has the timer and kind of clicking on the ghosts. And then the timer runs out, so then the game's over and we scored a 10. Okay. Just a little side note for educators any of the projects here on the Raspberry Pi, they have additional printer free. Uh, versions of the project as well, or you can see the completed project so you can show it to your class. But that's the uh, that's basically what we're going to be working on here. Okay, so move stuff around on my desk. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Whoop, click the wrong thing and it jumped. So let's go ahead. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover here on our handout and then I'm going to flip back and forth and do our code. So hopefully we can learn together and kind of flip back and forth, okay? All right, so first, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and get rid of our cat. So let's click the little trash can. His name is Scratch. <laughs> He's kind of our mascot, all right? And then let's go ahead and let's choose a new sprite and let's pick ghost, okay? So go down here to where the cat is. Now, one of the big things is that you can upload your own graphics. So 
Can I just hover there? Yeah, okay, so I don't actually have to click, I can just hover on the cat. So basically the first one here is upload your own sprite. So if you click there, you can actually upload a whole bunch of different graphics here, okay? Uh, GIFs, uh, just JPEG pictures, anything like that. And a little bit you'll show the, ed you can look at the editor and we'll talk about that. And I think we'll do like a turkey next month. Um, so we're gonna kind of focus on more drawing next month with one of our projects. Also, the other thing is that it does have a random one where it'll choose one for you. It also has one where it takes us directly to the paint uh, side of things and we can draw something. We also have our choose a sprite or we can just click, it's the same thing, that one, or just click the cat head again. So let's click the cat head again. This will take us to the graphics that are already built into Scratch. So all our project today, we're gonna to be using the graphics from here. One thing is if you want to know if, there's an, if they're animated, just take your mouse and hover over them. And then if they're animated, they should show a bit of animation. A minute we'll do the, the bat because we're going to expand our, our ghost. We might even do some uh, spooky theme music in the background. Okay. So if you hover over it now, this is a good example sometimes and you'll see this with other projects too. Sometimes if you see, because so this is animated, okay, but when I go to the one that says buildings, it's not really animated, it's showing that that, that graphic has a bunch of other graphics inside of it. So I could actually just choose one of those and you know it allowed me to use, have a whole bunch of different graphics in there. Not really technically animated. Here's like a cat from above, And let's go to ghost. Our ghost is kind of silly. And also Frank's over here too. So let's go, here's our ghost, he's animated. So let's click on him. All right, so there's our ghost. Let's go back to our handout. Our next step is to choose a background and let's choose woods, okay? So let's go where it says backdrop, background, same thing. Same thing, you could upload your own graphic if you wanted to. So let's click there. And lots of great project ideas here. It makes it really easy to start your own uh, you know, animated story or game or card or interactive, anything that you kind of have in mind here. Lots of great ideas. Let's go ahead and let's click Woods. Yay, and now our ghost is in the woods. Now. To move him around, we just drag him around. Okay, let's put him in the middle for right now. All right, so let's go ahead and, and uh, go back. All right, add code to your ghost sprite so that the ghost appears and disappears forever when the green flag is clicked, okay? So let's look at our code. So the big thing is what we want is we want what's called a forever loop, okay? So you can set it up to do a certain things. Now, I'm not assuming that you've already had the making a card class, which I kind of view that as our basic um, scratch class. So I'm gonna kind of walk through everything here. I do recommend that one, like we did the Halloween one. We did make a Halloween card and dance party. Um, we also have the other ones that are similar, but Anyway, we do a little bit more advanced stuff in that, that one than the, than the usual one that we do year round. So the big thing is we need to add when clicked. So let's go ahead and add that. So we have our ghost and let's go ahead and we want to go to control, excuse me, events, and then drag that over. And I'll actually zoom in a little bit. And I think, I don't think that might be a little too big. So let's do it here. So when clicked, so when the green flag is clicked, our game should start, okay? So we want to add a forever loop. So once we click the green flag, we want forever this to happen. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to control. Now there are repeat. We did that in our animation class, but we want to use the forever loop, okay? So once we click the green flag to stop the game, we're gonna do a timer later 
to stop whatever is happening we're going to hit the stop sign but the forever loop will keep going and going and going all right so forever loop first thing we want him to do is we want him to hide okay so let's go to our looks and let's go to hide all right now we want him to hide and then reappear after one second okay and then how do we get him to reappear we click show and then we need because it's going to loop back around again we need to give it a one second in between or it'll look like nothing happened it'll be like a blink okay so we need to give it a, a wait one second and then looks and it's show and then wait one second okay all right now let's go ahead and let's click the green flag and then our ghost should basically be blinking and because he's on a forever loop that means that will go on forever okay all right so let's hit the stop sign now you do need to stop it when you see him okay if you don't do you realize the show is actually right here so if you do accidentally stop him and you don't see him anymore um, that's why we also have our name here and it also talks about the position of the graphic so if I move the graphic over here the coordinates on the screen change okay coordinates on the screen change coordinates on the screen change okay this is talking about which direction he's facing this also talks about the size of the graphic and when we did the dance party Frankenstein was too big so we actually had to make him 75% in size instead of the 100% okay all right so let's go back let's make our ghost random okay your ghost is really easy to catch at the moment because it doesn't move okay add go to random position right before the show okay so let's look for looks or is that under motion see even myself I go now which is it now it's blue it's go to blue go to random position there are other choices there where the mouse pointer is but we want random position so hide wait a second go to random position and then show all right, let's try that. There you go, perfect. So now he just kind of shows up wherever he wants to be, doesn't he? Bloop. <laughs> there he goes. All right, so we have to hit stop. And again, if you hit stop when he's not shown, to bring him back, click the show button, and he'll come right back okay so now we've got him moving around randomly so that's the a good start now how do we get him to move around more randomly so right now he's showing up about every second okay so what do we want to do we want to make the ghost show up between a certain time frame okay make the ghost wait a random amount of time while it is hidden and we're also going to learn about basically embedding other code into our main code because this is round like this when we go to operators there's actually an operator called pick random okay it says 1 to 10 so because that's round I can actually drag it and put it right there okay so between 1 to 10 seconds it'll go um, move it so it's actually so when I click the flag it goes hide so it makes sure it's always hidden to begin with picks a random time goes to a different position does show and then waits a second so let's try that now we may have to wait 10 seconds to see our ghost but be ready ah <laughs> So the randomness is one and between one and ten seconds. There you go. And we'll show you one more time. 
There it is. Whoop, I do show so we can see him right now. All right, so we've got him kind of jumping around everywhere. One to 10 seconds. All right, let's go ahead and let's make that five seconds instead. So all I have to do is click right here, change it to five. And now it'll be between one and five seconds. All right, so now let's talk about setting his size, okay? Set size block to make your ghost a randomly larger or smaller each time it appears. Now, remember when we talked a second ago, and I'll show you this because it's a little bit more visual. So here's the size of our, our guy. So if I make him 200, hit enter. Now there's 200, or I can change him to 20, and then it'll be really micro small, okay? So mainly we have him at 100, but I will tell you this, some of the little graphics that they actually come pre-made, uh, a lot of the time a good idea, because a lot of your gamers may actually be playing this full screen because you can hit this button, it'll show full screen, okay? Doesn't have to be super large and it's 75% instead of the 100%. It looks pretty, still pretty big on the screen, but allows you more movement for games and you know, if you're gonna do something that's jumping around on the screen, uh, you'll be better set, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna make the block set size, okay? We're gonna set the size before he uh, shows up. All right. So let's go to looks where it says, hold on, I gotta find it. There it is, set size. So yeah, right before show. So it's gonna set the size to 100. Now remember I told you about this being oval or round or circle-y. You wanna say that. I can actually use other operators to be able to change the factors. So let's go to operators. And this time I want to change it to, let's go back to our handout here. So it's gonna say pick random, but this time because it's in a set size and it's showing the percentage over here, I'm gonna change the pick random to 20 and 200. Now, the interesting part about this is, so let's get our pick random and drag it and hover over our set size. You'll see it glow, let go. Now, if any time you make a mistake, just you know drag some of the pieces away and then just start over. If you ever need to, you can right click and there's a delete um, button right there too, okay? I did forget something I have not named now, because I'm logged in, I can actually name our project. So I'm going to say ghost. And today is 10. Uh, what is today's date? Today is the 29th. And hit enter. Now it will automatically save our project to the, the cloud. Okay. All right. Now, we don't want it 1 to 10 because then that would look like this. Okay, he would never get any bigger. It would just seem like he's very, very far away, okay? So let's hit stop. We wanna change this to 20, to 200. All right, now let's try it. Now the interesting part about this is because we're changing this his size, it'll actually look like once you play the game, that he's closer or further away. Okay. Ah! So that one was pretty close there, wasn't it? All right, so because of the size change here, it actually will make him look like he's getting closer or further away to you, which is kind of fun. And the first time I did this project and did that, I really didn't realize that that's what it was gonna feel like. All right, so let's go to our next part. Let's code about catching our ghost, okay? Now you're going to add code to your game so that the player 
to catch ghosts, okay? And we're going to add another ghost in here, too. Um, we might add the bat in here. We'll see. The player should be able to click ghost to catch them. So let's add the code below, okay? So when this sprite is clicked, make him hide, okay? So let's go to control. And now we're going to start a new strand of uh, code. And it's right here when, let's see, nope, let's see, where is it? Under control. Mm -hmm. Unless it's under events, let's see. The events and controls still seem like they're very similar to each other. There it is. When sprite is clicked. So we'll put that one right here. I'm going to zoom out just a bit so they don't have them run into each other. So when the sprite is clicked, meaning the ghost, we want it to hide. Okay. Pretty easy. Now, the interesting thing about this is this is actually on all the time. So just because someone clicks the flag, that does mean the, the game has sta uh, started, or at least the ghost will jump around. But if you click on him right now, he actually will disappear. So anytime you have this, when the flag is clicked, you don't have to have actually started the game. That's kind of at any time. I will tell you this, I've had it where um, you want to make sure that um, you tell the person to click the flag. I've had it where someone, I made something, showed it to somebody, and then they started clicking um, on the screen. It was like, and then it seemed like the game was broken. <laughs> It's like, no, you got to click the flag. All right, so let's try it. Let's click the flag. He should show up randomly. Oh. 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 And when he's not visible, he is not clickable. Because he's hidden. Ah. Ooh, that was a good one. That was a long time. All right, so let's make him visible again. All right, so now that we've set it up so that when he appears randomly like that, we can actually uh, make it so that we can click on him. All right, now we actually want a sound, don't we? Okay. Now let's go ahead and talk about our sounds. He actually comes with a sound. So we're on the, the ghost sprite, of course. Let's go up here and click sounds. And this is his sound. Okay. That sounds more like an alien to me, so I don't actually like that one. Let's go ahead and choose a sound from the library. It's called Boing, which is kind of funny. It makes him a little bit of a funny character. So how do we add new sounds? Well, we're on our character. We click sounds, and now let's click down here. Now. Just like before, we can upload our own. If we click Upload Sound, it actually will show what formats can we upload. We can upload WAV files and we can actually upload MP3 files as well. Okay? So, pretty much anything that sound related, you know, you can upload. Okay? But let's go ahead and you can record your own sound as well through the microphone on the computer. But let's click the Choose a Sound again and it's going to show us the full library. Now, if any of these are interested in what they sound like, you just got to hover. You can scroll down, and this is the one where actually, here's a few of them. This birthday song. Lots of sounds, lots of great ideas, musical notes even. Alright, so let's go to the boing one. So 
Let's choose that. Oink. 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 Now, what can you do with your sounds? And we may add uh, some spooky background music later, too. Oink. Oink. You can make it go faster. Oink. Slower. Oink. 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 At any point when you mess around with these, you can actually do the undo Boing. button. Boing. 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 And go back to the original, make it louder, softer, fade in, fade out. You can reverse it. <coughs> Sounds like a dog. <coughs> There's a robot. <coughs> Almost makes it unrecognizable. <coughs> All right, so let's go ahead. And let's go back to our code. And now what we want to do is, it kind of moved around on me, didn't it? So we picked Boing. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to add an extra one where it says, when the sprite is clicked, play the Boing sound. Or we're going to add, uh, play the Boing sound is what we're going to do. So let's go to our character here. We're going to take, take hide and make it separate. Let's go to sounds and right or now because we added our sound first of course it actually is listed right here now I don't want any of our sounds to slow down any of our reactions right now so I'm actually going to choose the one that says uh, okay well it has the uh, until done that's fine I guess so we'll get through this little sound is short so until done and then hide so now when we click our little guy Oink. Let's do go. Oink. 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 <laughs> All right, making sure again. All right. Go back down to our next part. So did you test it? Did it work? Okay, good. All right, now let's go ahead. And I actually want to add another character. Let's add our bat. So we're gonna do something similar with our bat this time. Let's go down here and let's click choose a sprite. All right, and there's our bat. All right. So our bat's a little bit large, so we want to make him, let's see, that looks a little bit better, okay? So we basically want to do something that's similar, okay? We want it so that when somebody clicks on the bat, okay, now we could actually make it the bat uh, be more animated if we wanted to, make him kind of glide around if we wanted to, other than him just kind of randomly, you know, picking an area or whatever. So let's go ahead, let's click our bat, and let's do when the flag is clicked. All right, want him. Let's see, what do I want him to do? I want him to Kind of appear we'll give him a little bit of a motion going on here and I do believe let me look at my handout here do we we're going to add the score but I don't think we go into no we don't go into animating our ghost so let's go ahead and let's talk about animating our characters here whoops sorry so let's look at our ghost to begin with and then we'll talk about our bat Let's look at our costumes area. So our costumes or their keyframes or frames, if this was a different kind of different program, that's kind of him going back and forth. Okay. Now I like to do, so it looks like he's kind of looking to the left here. I actually like to extend uh, my animation just by duplicating it. I'll show you how I do that. So I want him to look to the left and I want him to look to the right. So I want another uh, frame. So I'm gonna right click on this one and say duplicate. So now I have two the same. 
But the second one, I'm going to go up here and click Flip Horizontal. And now it's going to look like now he's looking to the left and he's looking to the right. So that way, left and right. And you could, mm, you could mirror that if you wanted to, but I don't know why. But the big thing is there's your animation. So now it looks like he's looking to the left and to the right. Now we have him kind of throwing his arms up going, ah! So let's go ahead and let, he, we have him going to the right. So let's kind of have him dance to the left as well. So let's right click here, click duplicate. And then let's click flip horizontally. So now we have him going this way, this way. All right. <laughs> All right, so there's our animation. Now let's go back to our code. Now, big thing is we have no animated code for him right now. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to uh, looks. And all we really need to do is where it says, now we can tell it specifically which costume we want him to switch to. Okay. But for right this second, we don't really care. So let's go to the one that says ne um, next costume. And we want to put that right before the show. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. Oink. Oink. So now he's like a living thing moving around. Remember I have a second to Oink. click on him. Oink. 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 And we don't know what his plan is. Or where he's moving to. Oink. 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 <laughs> okay, we're gonna let him show. Um, Oink. I think I have an idea here. Let's see. <laughs> Boing. That's right. If Let's see. Let's see. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about something. Just I don't know if that's going to work, so I may not play around with that. I'm trying to think about how I would do that. Hmm. I was thinking about animating him, but I think we should animate our bat. So it looks like our bat's kind of flying around a little bit. And we might be able to get him to move randomly. So we're going to kind of keep our ghost the way he is. So he's kind of I'm going back and forth here with his different animations. So he's doing well. All right, so but stop. That might actually be too small. The 20 seems a little too small, but anyway. So let's go ahead and let's do our bat, and let's look at our bat costumes. So our bat goes here. He kind of, his big motion is this, okay? And then there's one that looks like he's screaming, okay? So the only thing I don't want, I don't like is this one because it looks like he's asleep, okay? So that's, that doesn't really work. In the animated card class, I actually take him, uh, changes his, his uh, direction and have him hanging from up there, and then he flies down, okay? I could even see that you could um, come up with something where the bat is flying at you. Maybe they're up here and you can't click on them yet, but when they turn, and they start randomly flying at you, that would be kind of fun. But anyway, so our big thing with our bat is we actually want him to be doing these three animations, okay? So let's go ahead to our code. So when we hit the, the flag, we want it to be similar to our ghost. We want a forever loop, okay? 
and then we want um, it to okay so we do want him to be hidden because we're going to kind of have him pop out kind of like the ghost a little bit mm -hmm. that's under looks and then we do want him to wait so let's put a weight in there. <laughs> yes, Mac, that's funny, isn't it? Boing. All right, so instead of that, we want to put in our operator, pick random. 1 to 5, similar to the ghost. We're kind of going that. I could copy this over there. That's one of our big things that we can do. So let's get random position, motion, Oh, go to random position sorry go to random position and we want our size to be not as big as that I think I think a hundred should be plenty for him because he is a bat all right so let's do looks set size and we're going to do our or operator that says random and we'll do we'll do 20 but I think a hundred should be plenty for him. All right, now we also want it to switch to specific costumes. Okay. I want him to look like he's animated. Okay. So this is going to be tricky because we're actually going to have to create another string of code. So we're not actually going to put the, the next in here. We're going to do the show and then wait one second. All right, so let's check that out. So our bat should just kind of be appearing and reappearing. Boing. Boing. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to our bat and what I want it to do is come uh, the events we want to animate him so let's get it we'll put a forever loop in there so as long as the flag has been clicked we want him to let's see where is my where it is uh, let's make him wait 0.5 okay and then switch to our uh, different costume is what I want. So looks, we'll start him off on the A costume. So A, B, and C is what we really want. Now, at any point, if you just want to try out your code, first I have to make sure that I can see him. So I got to do that. So if I actually click this code, we should just make him look like he's flying. There we go. Okay, now let's hit the stop on that. Now let's try that and see if it looks like he's kind of flying around. There you go. <laughs> I 
still kind of feel, feels kind of like they're showing up at the same time, doesn't it? I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make the the bat two seconds to make sure that they're not in sync in any way. I know that's strange. Now let's try. There you go. That's a little better. Of course, the bat now looks absolutely small. So let's make him a little bigger. Let's do 30 on him. Okay, so now let's go ahead. We need to go ahead and add the next thing. And we want to make it so that when we click the bat, it's going to make a noise as well. Okay, so let's zoom out a little here. And I'm going to add our click event. And you want to add a sound. Let's go to sounds. And the bat has a weird one. It's like an owl. Let's do a different sound. And if we go to, let's see, effects. chomp all right so when the sprite is clicked play the chomp sound and then we want him to hide all right so now let's blow it up and try it out Boing. Okay, so let's go ahead now. I'm going to do save. And let's go ahead and we're actually going to start adding our clock at the top. Okay. And let's see. I think we'll add some spooky music before we do that, though. I think that would be good. So let's go ahead and let's click our backdrop. We can do some code on our backdrop, so that's what we're going to do. Let's click sounds. And it actually comes with that noise for some reason. So let's click choose a sound. And I think what we want is, let's see, loops. around with this a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do copy. 
copy. Let's do paste. Oh, I have to get it. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our background here. Let's do start. And we'll have a forever loop on there. And then sound. And we'll do start sound. <laughs> Drip drop is what it's called. And let's see. Let's see. Can I change the volume a little bit? Nope. Aha. I actually want the there you go, that's perfect. Oh, that's funny because it won't actually make it fade out eventually. Okay, I'm okay with that. That sounds fun. Okay, so let's look at our part here. So let's click our green flag. have it fading out which I'm actually okay with that I don't think that's I think that's pretty funny okay so let's go ahead to our next part and let's add our score all right so let's add our score and our timer all right now you you um, now you're going to make your game more interesting by keeping score create a new variable called score click on variables in the code tab Click on make a variable, type the name of the variable, and type score, and click OK. Alright, so we want to go to variables. Now, it actually has a built-in my variable, but we're going to create two. We want it to actually give the name of the variable on the screen. Okay, so make a variable. We're going to call it score. Say OK. And now we have it here. And now, if we want it to show it on the screen, we can have it checked. If we don't want to show it on the screen, there it is. Now, if you do want to change its look, you left click on it. See? And there are some ways you can even have it do a, um, we got to double click on it. So if you don't want that, you can just have it so it's just showing um, the number on there. But we, don't, we actually want to tell it score too. All right, so we got our score. Click OK. Players should score points when they click on a ghost to catch them. Each time a player clicks on a ghost, their score should increase. So let's click the backdrop. All right. Click backdrop. Add, okay, hang on. Hang on here. Oh, okay. That hasn't been added yet. So we click backdrop. Let's add the code. Let's do when the green flag is clicked. 
separate from our music. When the green flag is clicked, and I'll zoom in a little bit, set score to Gotta go to variables, set score two. Green flag is clicked. Make sure your chosen score. I'm gonna have it on zero right now. Then let's add a new one. That's that, oh, for the ghost. We gotta go to the ghost, okay? Then make it when this sprite is clicked, hide, okay? And we're gonna add to that, that one that we already added, change score by one. Okay, so let's click the ghost. So when the, uh, the, the sprite is clicked, we want to change variable by one. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the bat. So when this sprite is clicked, change variable. Oh, make sure it says score, sorry. Change it to make sure it says score change variable by one change it to score okay and that's it okay so let's go ahead and let's try that that's for our score This is funny because of the music. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the music here. Okay, so apparently when, because I have it doing this fade out thing, let's just get rid of that for now. That's kind of a, a fun thing, but let's go ahead and back to our game here. Oh, hang on. Oh, did I not click? Okay. Oh, hold on. Okay, it turned the volume down. So, huh. So, how do I get it to go back up again? I know we have sounds. Okay, I guess I guess we'll do that for to get it to fix it. Okay. And then yeah, okay. All right, so here we talk about adding a timer the timer is a little bit more complicated than adding a score okay the funny thing about a timer is that we're actually you can tell it to do things uh, you can basically what we're doing is we're we're having it set the time for 10 10 uh, seconds at the beginning um, so we might do 15, we'll see. I think the last time I did 10, it seemed like it was not enough time because we have everything kind of randomly showing up here. We'll do uh, 15 seconds. So basically every time that we, we so let's, let's just go through our steps here. So we basically have it set when we click the, the green flag to set it 10. And then every have to program it that every second to subtract one second, okay? And then we actually have, and I'll scroll back up here, so that's that's not too confusing. That's about when our game ends, okay? So let's go ahead and let's add a variable. 
So let's go to variables. Let's make a new variable and let's call it time. Okay. All right, now you can move it anywhere you want. I'm gonna move it over here to the right side so it matches our um, graphic, our handout. All right, so we call it, well, we call it, yeah, it's time. Well, time or time or whatever you wanna call it. All right, my example here has it as time. Okay, let's do uh, set time to 10. And this is on the backdrop, okay? So when our set time to 10, okay? I think we'll do 15, because last time I think it was way too short. So we'll do 15 here. Set time to 15, okay? Now what we want it to do is that the game should stop when the timer reaches zero, okay? So what we want to do is every time they click it, so repeat 10 times, which we're going to make it 15. So repeat 10 times and the wait will make it stop for a second, okay? So it's kind of a trick here. We're not really, we're creating a timer based on creating this loop that's going to count down uh, 15 times and every time it goes around it's going to pause for a second and then subtract one from the clock okay so it's a little bit of a coding trick here all right so do we want to do a repeat whoop I want to do a repeat and we're actually going to make it 15 because like I said it seemed like that took forever I mean it was too short excuse me repeat wait one second before it does anything uh, if you get those out of order then it won't look it'll it'll look strange because it'll be subtracting already we do the wait one second okay now we're going to do change time minus one all right so our variable change time Let's see if I can zoom in here so it'll be a little bigger change time minus one all right okay now we actually have a timer so let's try our game out all right so this will, re this will reset it stops hit the green flag and it starts over again so that when the timer ends, the game will actually end, okay? So let's do that. So we're actually gonna put in um, the operator in there is what we're gonna do. If your game is too easy, you can give the player less time, okay? Well, let's, let's do the um, stop the clock and everything. So the game should stop when the timer gets to zero. So click backdrop, add code, if then is what we're going to do if then if then and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add an operator in there okay and we want it to be equal so our operator and we're not looking for greater than less than we're looking for equal all right, now remember these are ovils, so we can actually put in 
operators are ovils too. Ovals, excuse me, I don't know what's ovils. So let's grab time. Timer equals zero. Then stop all. Okay. And the stop all is under, I think it's controls. Let's see. There it is, stop. And it actually has, you can choose which one. This script, other sprites, so stop all. I want everything to stop. Okay. And that's it. So if time variable equals zero, then stop all. All right, let's try it. So the music stopped, it's just the same as if I hit the, the stop sign, okay? So there's five, so I got five, let's see if I do better. I think I clicked between his ears. is the highest that I can get so far so let's go back to our handout here so let's talk about what else we can do with our little game okay we could actually add more characters to it um, one thing that's really neat is I remember on the original uh, space invaders they had a uh, one that would show up in the background every once in a while and it would actually be like a super character and if you clicked it or even at the the um, was it the Toy Story ride, you can actually shoot other characters that actually mean more points. And I think we have time. We could actually do that. I wanted to add Frankenstein in here, so we might add him. And instead of him being worth one point, maybe he should be worth five. We'll kind of have him randomly go around. So here's a big one: how to make the game is the game too easy? Okay. Well, right now I'm only getting six points at the most, so I don't think it's too easy. Uh, make the ghosts appear less often. Okay, want to make it easier? Make the ghosts appear more often. Okay, also making the ghosts smaller as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's play around with that a little bit. And I didn't mean to click that, so hold on. I want to add uh, Frankenstein the back, and he's going to be like a super character that's going to show up. Not as much as them, okay? And I think he has a sound. Does he have a sound? He just has a, a, a wolf with him. Well, let's add a different sound. There's a funny sound. Let's see. We're using the other one. We'll use that one to scream too. It's pretty fun. Ow! 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 All right, so let's go to our code here. We're basically going to kind of mimic the ghost one, and we're kind of mimic the mimic the bat one as well, um, because we actually want him to be animated. So let's look at our costume here. Now this is another one where he actually looks one way. I'm going to duplicate that and get it to flip. So now he looks like he's doing this. And then he throws his hands up. <laughs> Alright, so it's kind of like a little dance he's doing. Alright. 
Maybe we'll make him glide around uh, randomly. I think that would be kind of fun. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to our code here. And he's a little too big. So in general, let's make him smaller. Let's make him about 50, because he's gonna be a, a bonus character here. And we'll actually put him right about here, I think. All right, so let's get started here. All right, so when the flag is clicked, we actually want him to kind of forever we want to see him do a little dance. We'll actually make a separate for him. So let's do our looks. And we'll do a forever looks. And we'll do next costume. Okay, so he'll be dancing. Oh, too fast, isn't it? So we need to add a control in the middle there. So let's do 0.5. So it looks like he's doing a little dance. So how about that? Do 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 do. Rawr. 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 Okay. So we're gonna kind of make him a little bit of a bonus character here. So when we start off, we actually want him to be hidden, don't we? And then we want it to go to our next part here, so for our forever loop, so let's go back to our ghost. So we want him to hide, pick a random time. We're not gonna choose a random position, okay? We're gonna pick a random time though, and then we're gonna actually have him glide from one side of the screen to another, okay? So he's gonna hide, where is, Mm -hmm. Hang on, I need the, uh, yeah, I need the weight is what I need. Weight. We want to use the operator pick a random. And we need this over here. And here, we'll make him a point. 0.5 then that would be good the other characters it seems like we're having to wait for them to show up so um, we will see what we want to do with that so between 0.5 and 10 I think we'll do the full um, yeah I think 0.5 and 10 I think that would be good okay so you might see him twice when he's on there okay and then I want him to I want him to show, where is it? Show, and then I actually want him to glide across the screen, okay? <laughs> so we're gonna actually have him glide across the screen kind of randomly, and we'll see how quickly that can, can, can uh, click that, I guess. All right, so let's glide <laughs> to a random place on the screen. Eh. Okay, I think that would be good, actually. So we're going to get him to do the random position, kind of like the other, and then we're going to get him glide to a random position. And we want them to only be there for like half a second. Let's see how difficult that is to click. Okay. Now, the big thing is we actually want it to be, so when we click on our guy here, where's our, mm -hmm. let's see, we want event. When Sprite is clicked, we want to play the sound, the scream, ah! <laughs> until done. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Scream until done, and then we want it to hide. 
Okay, now we also want it to do what? We want it to change, and we're going to give it by five. I think that would be good. Change my score variable by five. So, Mr. Frankenstein will be worth five points this time. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and let's try it. And I think my bat and everything, I think I may change them a little bit. Let's change them to 0.5. So I want them to kind of show up pretty quickly here. And I think I'm going to make the bat show up a little bit quicker. So I'm going to give him every three seconds. Okay. All right. So here we go. pretty good that's pretty good I like that now you could make it so instead of him being random you could actually make it so that he was gliding on the screen I thought about doing that with the bat so maybe we should do something like that with the bat and I kind of like him gliding because he's a bat too All right, so he shows up, random position, he shows, and let's see. I think I'll just have him move. Eh, that could be random, though. Mm. Anyway, so you actually could have some background characters here that are not as random as these folks, but then have it kind of show up and you know, like a bat flying directly across here and then kind of going back and forth, but he only shows up every once in a while um, so that you could actually control his position. So I think I might change my bat so he'll kind of fly around up here, okay? Kind of back and forth, but he's not always um, up there. So instead of getting him to go to a random position, Let's change that, and I'm going to move that over there. Nope, I def what the what uh, what okay. All right, so we're going to have him start right there. Now, if you want something to start somewhere, okay, you always have it. So you move it there first. It does the coordinates, and then you can say uh, go to. Okay, so we want it to go to, all right, so it's going to show up here, it's hide, wait 0. 0.5 to 3 seconds, show up here, then I want it to glide, and I'll move this to over here, glide to there. Okay, so it should show and then glide to there. All right, so let's try that. <laughs> so that kind of allows you to have characters that are kind of moving in a certain direction, kind of like a shooting gallery. Okay make it a little bit less random but when they appear their randomness um, you know is a little bit more of a big deal all right so let's get to the stop yeah I mean that's pretty good I don't think his size needs to be let's say 80 maybe 40 80 all right, so let's go ahead and try our, our ending here. All right, so here we go.
it's the sound effect. I can click them more than once because the sound effect's a little bit long. Eh. So I should actually change that from scream until done to play the sound. Eh. So that actually makes the characters stay on the screen too long. Interesting. All right, so Frankenstein, we did that. Where is. All right, now let's try that. Basically, we have covered a lot, haven't we? I'm going to hit save on this. I think we have covered a lot with our Halloween <laughs> game special here. So it's a lot of things that you can do. Um, like I said, in the handout, I have a whole bunch of other games that we have listed on there as well, like a bouncy ball. I was even thinking you could make that into like a, a, a theme a Halloween kind of theme one, but you'd have to upload or create your own graphics for certain things to make them kind of Halloween themed. Then also there's a neat boat race one, and I even thought that you could make this into like a Halloween um, maze kind of going around that way. Then you have to get to it kind of like someone's in a spooky house or something, but you would need some special graphics to be able to do that more than just the, the ones that come with the project. So. In our next class, I think we're going to be doing making a little bit of our own graphics or uploading them. And I've got another game on there, kind of like a Donkey Kong game to do. So let's go ahead and let's finish up here. Talk about different resources, different kind of projects and games that you can do. Um, there's even a make your own Mario game tutorial, some Star Wars sprite stuff, kind of some of the top five scratch games that people like to play and stuff, kind of give you some good ideas. Uh, great video about how getting started with scratch and other great places to do some coding and stuff. Also, you can go to things like if you want to go beyond scratch, um, try out some of our Python classes, but also some other classes um, as well. I do one class that is uh, Scratch to Python and it uses, it has a website that creates a block similar to Scratch but they're Python uh, code. So let's go ahead and let's kind of play around with what we had talked about earlier. So I've saved my project. Uh, you could hit tutorials here and there's a whole bunch of different online tutorials that they actually have in the game. Making a click game is basically what we did today. Different animations, you know, add sprites, recording sounds, arrow keys, animating things, adding effects, all kinds of fun stuff that you could do. And if you want to, you could actually go back up here, click sprite, I mean, scr um, scratch, sprite, scratch. And then if you do a search, type in Halloween. And it'll be all kinds of fun Halloween games that the different creators uh, have created. Okay. And I did see one that actually was like a pumpkin carving one. Okay. Let's see.
Well, there you go. Happy Halloween. And if any of these that you're wondering how is it coded, click up there where it says look inside and it'll actually show how they do that. And then of course there are different sprites and stuff that they use, characters and everything, and the, the coding that they've done. And so like there's the sounds. And the different characters and everything. So it actually allows you to go in and see the actual coding that they're doing you know in there with the sprites and stuff all right so we've come to the end of class hope you enjoy class you press the door thing again spooky so this is our last Halloween class for 2020, and I hope you enjoyed yourself and learned something new and everything. I enjoyed this class too. Like I said, Thanksgiving, I think we might do some turkey stuff. We'll see what we have planned and everything, and hope you'll come join me then. And um, have a great, uh, happy Halloween on Saturday. So like I said, they have all these other classes that are still up and available on our YouTube channel here uh, for GCHRL videos uh, for our library, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. Spooky card dance party, that's the one I was talking about. Also Python coding and scratch coding with this uh, scary spot the difference prank. We did a Unity class this month and we may do another Unity class next month. Raspberry Pi projects we did how to make a sound trap. Oh, that's the spiders coming. And that project went really well yesterday and that video is still up too. Feel free to share this video with friends or family and stuff. And please don't forget that our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside hold pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call into the library with any questions that you do have about any of our services and stuff. And please don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like I said, if we can get 100 subscribers on our YouTube channel, we'll get our own customized YouTube address. Or search YouTube for GCHRL videos, and that'll pull it right up. So, glad that you were here with me today. Hope you got to, to see some of the other Halloween projects, too. So, I guess I wish you... Happy October, happy Halloween. See you in November. <laughs> Stay safe, have fun. It's warm today, so go for a nice walk or something. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.